to be as gentle as possible. The Holy Spirit has shown me that Kingdom Dominion theology is destroying uh, the Gentiles. Partisanship, uh, 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 extreme partisanship between Christianity and the world. I have some notes here uh, regarding, you know, Babylon is all about Kingdom Dominion. Okay. Um, and I want to get into a different video regarding some of these notes. But uh, basically what's happening is that uh, the Republicans and Democrats are polarizing the entire world. They're creating extremism, extreme partisanship uh, within society, different groups of people, and within their own uh, establishment. They're causing polarization to the entire country of North America and the entire world. So, um, but that, that's their goal. And through that, what they're doing is they're, they, they maintain their position. There's two parties, Republican and Democrats, two horns of Lucifer. It's being led of Lucifer, okay? It's not of God, okay? So, uh, I want I'll get into this in a different video regarding exactly what is going on and um, but I would like to speak regarding this video where I was street preaching I was invited to City Hall and um, I, uh, it was from the, the Lord there's no doubt about it and Antifa and LGBTQ was going to be there and so the Holy Spirit put in my heart as he does you know to be there to minister to preach there and so Jaren, so what happened was I was there, and when I got there, uh, things heated down because there was a lot of disruption going on. And after that, the Holy Spirit put it in my heart to, to, to then go and to, and to preach. Now the battery expired. It, not the battery, actually. I hit the, the stop button by accident while I was preaching. Uh, that was about 14 uh, minutes of preaching. And um, there was the, it was what the Holy Spirit uttered near the end. It was, there was about 45 minutes worth. I, and I would have put the entire, the entire frame there, the entire recording time that I spent ministering. What happened at the end of that video is people got, got blessing. There were several people who received blessings. And uh, there were other street ministers that were there listening. And they went in, in amongst them and started ministering to them. And, and uh, I, you know, I wish I had the, the recording, but that's just what happened. I don't, um, I, I'm not having good success with, with video recordings. Um, so what the Holy Spirit showed me is, is, is the heart of Jesus Christ and the heart of what's happening in the hearts of the people. You see the sign says that uh, this is not your land to possess. Okay. Kingdom Dominion. What, what's happening with the people is they're afraid. They don't trust Christianity. They don't trust them because obviously they don't, they don't minister properly. They say one thing and then another. and It's, it's not consistent. And um, they don't know how to answer the questions. I've seen that many times. And there's a lot of anointed street preachers and street ministers uh, we, we as, as the body, we all have to come to the, to, to, uh, the fullness of what God is doing. Kingdom dominion in this age is not going to happen. It could have happened. And I'm going to show you how it could have happened, but it's not going to happen uh, because, of, and, and God said it won't happen, because of the, uh, how Lucifer has deceived the church. Lucifer, Satan, the devil has a church believing in the kingdom dominion in this age. Okay. Through, you know, um, ways that are of Lucifer and not of God. That is bloodshed and war and all of this, all, all the stuff that they're doing, deceiving the people. Okay. And, and, and the kingdom of God is not based on deception. It's not based on, uh, you know, bloodshed. He's not going to have that. He's, that's what he said to King David. You're not going to build me a house because your hands are filled with blood. So, uh, God showed me that 
I've seen it. They've, they've uttered it out of their own out of their own hearts. They've said, look, we don't trust Christianity. We don't trust you. If you were to rule over us, if you were to have any dominion in the political arena, we wouldn't trust you. But what God told them in that video is that if we did, if Christianity did do it and did it properly, you know, is what I should have told them. What I said is that, uh, what I told them is that if Christianity ruled over the world, they would still be able to have their, their they would still be able to do whatever they're doing. It wouldn't change anything. The difference is you'd have a better economy, which is true. If Christianity did it properly, okay, look in, look in, 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 in Kings. The greatest king, Josiah, one of the greatest kings, okay, what he did is he, he tore down all the groves except one, okay, because the country is secular. There's, there, they have, God is raising up the ends of the earth in order to expose everything. He wants Satan. Satan will be involved. Lucifer is involved uh, because every, he's keeping people honest with you know, Baal worship and all that. It's not to be gone in this age. It's supposed to remain in this age. So, to my, to, to, one thing for sure is if we had a proper government, a government of God that represents God on this earth, which we do not, okay? The Republicans do not represent God. They represent God in a very menial way, okay? As God says, he's using the sword of God is using wickedness and darkness for menial use. Uh, however, abortion, if the real government of God was here, the way it would work is there would be, there would be, you know, uh, 45, let's say there's 44 seats, okay? Six seats would be for secular men, okay? They would be Satanists, they would be, you know, people that don't believe in God, and and they're very essential, important to have. The man, the government, the president himself would be a man of the cloth, as as they used to say. He was sold out with the law of God. Okay, and then prophets and priests of God, and these prophets and priests would listen would be with, with, to these Satanists. They would listen to them because they, the Satanists, would they would be governing over these people. These Satanists would be given offices in the world to govern these people, and they would profit off of it. Okay? And these priests and prophets, so they'd be about, you know, they would be a minority where they, they wouldn't have the votes. The, this is the cabinet that would bring in the votes. Okay? And they would vote for the people that are not of God, that they could have an economy, that they can have a business, they can marry each other, they can do whatever the heck they want, minus less without abortion they would that would not even be debatable they wouldn't that wouldn't be debatable if they want to drink blood let them drink blood if they want to do whatever they want to do let them do it but once once again these people would be have a great economy an amazing economy a great existence but the law would be upheld okay the law would be upheld and then, and they could, you know, marry if they want to be gay, they want to come out of the closet, they want to have pride parade. Let them have a great time. Let them do it. But the law would be upheld. Okay, no killing, no strife, no stealing. That's how, that's how Josiah, that's how they governed the world. That's how they governed the, 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 the kingdom. Okay, it was sacred and civil. It was believers and non-believers. That's what it was designed for. And God would bless them. And then, and then the Lord would come. It would be a time of peace. It would be a takeover of the entire world. Right? It would be little blessings. All different kinds. And then God would return. God would put his... It's, and that's, that's exactly what's going to happen in the millennial reign. That's exactly what's going to happen. It's the same thing. It's going to be basically the same thing. But it's actually going to be an iron rod where uh, drinking blood would not be allowed. I mean, the millennial reign is going to be actually, um, it's going to be more stringent. It's, there's going to be absolutely uh, nothing at all regarding Lucifer. Lucifer, sin and death will be thrown in the lake of fire. So it, it'll be, it's a resemblance. Every year, every time a dispensation carryover is a resemblance. 
So the difficulties is that they're not understanding that. They're not told that. If we understand this, and we understand that there's salvation after hellfire, as the church does not believe, if we understand that there is no kingdom dominion in this age, as the church does not believe, if we can understand the truth, we become much, much better uh, able-bodied preachers. And we can make friends, as the Holy Spirit was wanting us to be. He says, you know, let's be friends. Um, and telling them that, you know, they can do whatever they want to do. The only thing is that if, if, if we had this government, which it won't happen, but if we had this government on earth, uh, I mean, the president, the president would have to answer to the priests and the prophets, to his cabinet. And they have to answer to the prophets and the priests that are of God. Okay, if not, they would, they would protest against them. They would, God would send prophets to rebuke this president, to rebuke these people. God would, send, God would keep these people honest, one way or another. And if they're not honest, God would tear them down, as he already has. Okay, they're done. They're being led of Lucifer. The Republicans and the Democrats are of Lucifer. Okay, get that. Get that. Understand that this kingdom dominion is, is, is polarizing the entire world. It's being used to um, uh, make extreme partisanship that also involves a group formed to fight secretly against an occupying force. Jesus said, I did everything openly. I spoke openly in front of the entire world. Nothing I've done in a secret chamber. It's against the rule of God. Now, what God is, what the church isn't understanding, okay, what they're not understanding is that God is blessing the people in the world. They don't have to go to church to be blessed. They don't have to be going to the assemblies to be blessed. Look here in Matthew chapter 8 is another example. Uh, the, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. He's a Gentile. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh. There was no Holy Spirit shed out in perpetuity, but he's speaking through the Spirit of God. So I say to this man, so I have soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go and he goeth, and to another come and he cometh, and to my servant do this and he doeth. And he's talking about his servant for, to be healed. And, well, he's saying, look, look, you're a great, I mean, you're, you're, I do this, and they're certainly going to do that for you. In verse 10 says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said to them that followed verily, verily he's not even part of the covenant. He's an outsider. He says, When Jesus heard, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily, verily, I say to you, verily, I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Now, Israel is a code name. Israel. To wrestle against God when, when they have received the Spirit of God, the instructions of God. And in verse 11 says, And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west, the breadth of the earth, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Five foolish virgins. Okay, so there's five wise virgins and five foolish ones. These are born again Christians. He's speaking regarding the first covenant. There, was hard, there wasn't a great, great harvest. There's going to be a, a greater one here in this age. But look at what Jesus is saying. He's saying that this centurion did not go to the synagogues. He wasn't part of the... He wasn't part of the... He wasn't part of the... The, 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 um, the gathering. But in his heart, this centurion, he had the mind and heart of God. You see, and that's what these people are. You know, there was, there was, it's so difficult. The, the stronghold is so hard that 
several now several of those people once again I don't know if I mentioned they were blessed they received a blessing from God and then they went to minister to them at the end the one the one and they were younger the one young young lady she was devastated she was in tears when when she said well Jesus is killing babies the Holy Spirit said it's not it's not Jesus that's Lucifer Jesus is kicked out of society the devil is doing that. That's the work of the devil. That's the legacy of the devil. And this is the legacy of the devil. This is the legacy of Jesus Christ. And, and she was actually started breaking down in tears. Her belief system was being crushed. Okay? And so our job as ministers is to break the ice. Our job as ministers is to speak life into them, to bring life in the land. It's not to possess them, it's to give them the freedom and the free will that God has given them. They can have their free will, as the Holy Spirit said. You can have your free speech, you can have your free will, but um, abortion, abortion has to go. And there's a law, there's laws in the land. We all have laws, we have free will, but, you know, God is going to discipline us, you know, uh, when we're doing the things that are going to lead us, lead the people into destruction, into finality of life. You know, after the white throne judgment, after the foundations, okay, of hell burst forth and the people stand before the Creator, they, they, many won't even see Him even there. And judgment will be uh, executed. And all sin and death will end up in the lake of fire. Well, our job is to get them in the best positioning possible at for, for them to, to stand at the white throne judgment. To make it easier for their fiery transcendency as the Holy Spirit spoke to them. Okay, it's a transcendency of fire. And that fire is in very in, is is Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the, the fire is is being afflicted by devils in this age, in the next age, uh, when the refiner's fire, hellfire, opens is enlarged and opens uh, uh, wide open, and receives the generation of his wrath, and all the different various degrees all different levels, all different intensities, okay? This is extremely important to understand this, extremely important. It's not even, this is the most important thing, and this will make the church more able-bodied ministers to preach properly to the people, because the church does not have the answers because they, they don't, they, see, Lucifer raises people up in falsehoods and in pride and arrogance. It's a delusion. Not believing in the truth is a delusion, and it causes the entire world to stumble. It causes these people who God loves, who wants to have them blessed. And the blessings of God are irrevocable, even if the whole world turns dark and it dies. Okay, and it's like a coal. There's still that little spark inside of it. That's the blessing of God. It doesn't leave. It stays there. Okay, that's what gets them through. And that, the proverb says that those who, uh, the, the, he who uh, saves, uh, accumulates wealth a little bit at a time, at the end will end up with abundance. Do not despise the beginning of small things as the Holy Spirit says through Zechariah, to Zechariah, to Zechariah, through the writings of Zechariah. So these are crucial things for us to understand. We, we do not minister, we minister through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not to be put in a box regarding how he ministers, whether he's going to be reproving, whether he's going to be uh, do whatever he does, he does. But uh, the, 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 
the words are for them to be blessed. It's for them to receive a blessing. And yeah, sometimes they need to be, they need to be um, reproved, so they can, and then proved why they're being reproved. You know, it proved why they're being reproved, and they need to all be welcomed in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Everyone, they're all welcomed, understanding that there's a dress code, understanding they need the garments of praise rather than those garments of ashes. Understanding that they're welcomed in our gatherings, whether they believe they need to repent or not. They're welcome because that's the beginning of small things. That's how people get drawn. The Holy Spirit is there. Let them walk with the Holy Spirit instead of condemning them. We're not in that age. We're in a different age. We're in a covenant of regeneration. The washing of the soul through the Spirit of God with our spirit in agreement with God. And being built up in the wisdom and the knowledge, the transcendency, the glorification, a full glorification. That is the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that we have of God, making us worthy to have an administration next to God in, in heaven, to be working next to God. That's what the people need to hear. So uh, I hope you're edified. Here's the video. God bless you. Peace be with you in the name of Can I say a few words? Yeah, can I say a few words? Yeah. My friends, Jesus Christ is the greatest protester in the history of creation. Jesus Christ was a rebel. He was the greatest rebel in the history of creation. And he did it for you guys, because he loves you guys. He wants to bless you. Jesus wants to bless you today. Your creator wants to bless you, because he cares for you and he loves you. My friends, rebellion doesn't need to happen in order for humanity to be saved. We can be saved without rebellion. We can be saved through the love and the peace of Jesus Christ. Come, come to the Lord and suffer the Lamb. You're all invited to come. You're all invited. You're all invited to come to the Lord and suffer the Lamb. Come and seek the peace of the Lord. The love that surpasses all understanding. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you, he cares for you. Greatest man that ever existed in the history of creation. Jesus Christ has the greatest legacy. God bless you, brother. He has the greatest legacy of all humanity ever existed in the history of creation. Jesus Christ has performed the greatest act of love in the history of creation. He has the greatest thought in the history of creation. He performed the greatest miracle in the history of creation, the resurrection. No man can boast and I cast boast. The man Jesus Christ of the Holy Bible said that he is the eternal life. And through him is life and he offers you life. He's offering you life today. He wants to bless you. Say yes to the love of Jesus Christ, my friends, and he will bless you today. Come to agreement with the righteousness of the Son and the grace of Christ. Say yes. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're doing today. If you make an agreement with the Lord, He will bless you today. If you want to receive a blessing from your Creator, my friends. If you want to be blessed by the Creator today, God will bless you today, my friends. My friends, Jesus Christ. He's the greatest protester of all. He protested for you. He protested so you can have life and life abundantly. Jesus, Jesus wants to bless you with his peace, with his love, his righteousness. That surpasses all understanding. He wants to give you a blessing today. Come into agreement and say yes to the love of Jesus Christ. The greatest act of love in the history of creation. Understand the gospel, my friend.
he died for you on the cross. Say, yes, God, I thank you for sending your Christ. I thank you for that unspeakable death that while you are we still sinners, Jesus Christ died for you. He didn't only die for the people he loved, he died for his enemies. That when he sees his love, they will have eternal life. He says, for as many as believe in me, I will give them eternal life. He says, believe in me, I will bless you. My friends, when Jesus Christ says to believe, he means that you have to believe in his work, physically and spiritually. You must believe. Believe in the love of God, my friends. That is the key of wisdom. The love of Jesus Christ is your transcendency, my friends. It's the only transcendency. God is not going to welcome killing and hatred and discord and chaos and lying and false, false witnessing and deceitfulness and murdering in his kingdom. Pride and arrogance, division. My friends, it can't happen because it's destroying his garden. My friends, you are the garden of God. You are the garden of God. The garden of God is being polluted with bad water. The garden of God is seeing GMOs. The garden of God is seeing strife and contention and evil. And finally, brethren, the garden of God is witnessing destruction. God says it cannot be. My friends, we must be at peace with one another. Be at peace, my brother, my sister. Be at peace. God will bless you. God wants you to have peace, my friends. Have peace in yourselves. And God will bless you, my friends. We want to be your friends. We want peace with you. We want you to be our friends. We're not your enemies. We're not here to hate on you. We are here to bring to you the righteousness of the Father, a visitation from the Holy Spirit. When you say yes, God will bless you. God will give you a blessing, my friends. We're here to be friends, to make friends. We're here so that you can receive a blessing from God and say yes to the love of Jesus Christ. You know, my friends, many people, they know Satan, and they say, hell, Satan, and that's okay. But my friends, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you only have half the picture. You only have half of the puzzle. You don't have the entire equation. You must get to know Jesus Christ, and you'll understand the entire matter. You'll understand once you get to know the Lord. Jesus Christ is alive, my friends. Jesus Christ is here, and he's waiting to bless you. He wants to give you a blessing, my friends. Seek the love of Jesus Christ that surpasses all understandings, my friends. And he will bless you. Come to the cross. Come and receive some prayers. The Bible says to come and taste that the Lord is good. Come. Come and taste that the Lord is good, my friends. Receive a blessing today. Say yes to the love of the cross. Jesus died for you. Jesus wants to bless you, my friends. It's a very simple thing to say yes to fall in love with your God. A wonderful God who sent his son, who took the first step forward while we are sinning, while we are yet sinning. Jesus Christ died for us. And now, my friends, we have to get that love. We have to pursue that love, my friends. We have to be at peace with each other. God says to drop your weapons of war and pick up weapons of peace. My friends, a peace that is a God, a peace with your Creator. Your Creator is active. Your Creator is here. The Spirit of God is here, my friends. And you're being visited right now. God is looking in your heart. God wants to bless you, my friends. Say yes to the love of Jesus Christ and receive a blessing today. Receive eternal life. God will bless you. God will carry you in his arms. God will hold you and wrap his arms around you. And he will put you into his bosom. And he will love you like you've never been loved before. God knows how to love you, my friends. God loves you better than you can love yourself. God knows you. He created you. You are of God, my friends. There is no hurtful spirit in you that is too big for God to not bless, to not break through the darkness, my friends. 
You must have strength and understanding with your strength, with your spirit, and with your physical body. And you must break through the darkness, my friends. It's hard to do, but we must break through the darkness. We must cry out to God. Go into your room, God said, and close your door and pray to your heavenly Father. And there he will hear you when you seek him with all your heart and mind and strength, my friends. He will bless you. He will give you a blessing. He loves you. You are special and precious. There is something inside of you that is so special that he says, I yearn and I yearn to desire to gather you together as a hand gathers your chicks under her wings. Be willing. Be willing today. Say yes. Make that commitment. Make that agreement with the Lord. And he will bless you today. He wants to receive a blessing today. He wants to receive a blessing. Come and receive a blessing. God will bless you. Say yes to the love of Jesus Christ. And God will bless you. Jesus loves you. And he's waiting for you. He wants an answer. He wants to wrap his arms around you and comfort you. 